Glad you're with us here on the show today, Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and we want to talk about some really big news that just hit our community. Of course, Kirk and Paul were talking about layoffs with Ford Motor Company. They're offering early retirement incentives. The hope is to cut its U.S. white collar workforce by, get this, 1,400 more positions. And a lot of that, of course, in, in the greater Detroit metro area. Tell us what you're thinking about this, this really big news right now. Megan, I think they're just starting, right? I mean, I, it's Ford, I, I think GM, I, I think we're just starting with to see the layoffs. And I mean, let's just put it in perspective. We're talking about 1,400 workers at Ford, but since COVID, we've lost 3 million baby boomers from the work workforce, Paul. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a trickle down, right? It's not just those workers, right? Because sure. those workers aren't, aren't doing things in the community. There's all the businesses that obviously support it's 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 going to be a continued problem in the future. I, you know, I think so many, particularly baby boomers, fall into this trap of thinking that they're always going to be able to predict when they're going to retire. First of all, we we all think we're invincible. We never really truly recognize how old we are. You know, the other day, I'll tell a quick story, Paul. The other day, I went like my eyes got really bad. I didn't realize how bad my eyes are, and I, and so for the listeners to know. First, Paul is my brother, so he's known me my whole life, and I'm uh, going to turn 50 this year. So I, I went and I've been using cheaters, right? And I've been using 200s, 250s, and I, I, uh, I, I got glasses, and then I finally got contacts here. And I put my contacts in, and I looked in the mirror, and I said, holy crap crap i've gotten old i mean no i'm serious i right. did when you have glasses on you can't don't notice the wrinkles and by the way those 200 cheaters i was using my bad eye is actually f like 450 <laughs> i'm supposed to be using for readers so i really wasn't seeing very well and i i think there's a lot of baby boomers not seeing very well and recognizing <laughs> how old they are right and how vulnerable you are as you age. Like, you don't always get to predict or anticipate or plan out your retirement. I know we all think, well, I'm going to work five more years, seven more years, and then I'll retire and I'll have this. And it's all mapped out until something happens, an right. unexpected event, whether it's it's the furlough, Paul, or the layoff, um, or a buyout option, or a health event, or a recession. It happens a lot to baby boomers where we don't get to target our retirements. Right. And, and, you know, not only is there a myth that we get to control when we retire, there's equally this myth that once you do retire, like, you could easily go go back and get a job, right? I mean, so, so you know, I, we have many clients, right, who, who have been forced to, to, to leave their jobs and they, you know, or, or you know, decided voluntarily, well, I'm going to leave my job because I know I'm skillful, I have a lot of education, I can go find another job somewhere else. And, and how many how many people, Kirk, have you met that have been unable to do that? A lot. A lot. And, and I'll give you the statistic right now. They, they, there's 42 percent of peop, those three million baby boomers that have been forced out of the workforce since COVID. Forty two percent say they are not going back to work. OK, but that's the, the other. Uh, many of them are delusional. Right. Age right. discrimination is alive and well. You know, your hundred and thirty, hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy thousand dollar engineering job. Um, you're 60 years old. Who? Why do you think? You, or you're an executive at Blue Cross Blue Shield. Why do you think someone is going to give you a job in a similar position with a similar pay? I think people are delusional. You know the funny part, Paul, and we're going to talk about this today. Maybe you don't even need close to that amount. A lot of times, it's ego getting in the way, and I just think so many people are going to get trapped with this unexpected retirement, and they're not prepared because they've had so much success financially through the years, they think it's going to be equally as easy in retirement. And it's the reason why Paul and I started teaching these classes 10 years ago. It's the reason we started the nonprofit organization called the Retirement Education Foundation. And we are offering a white paper on, it's called the 10 Steps to an Unexpected Retirement. The 10, it's a guide, 10 Steps to an Unexpected Retirement. Plus we're teaching our seven hour courses at all the major universities. If you'd like to register or get one of those white papers, you're going to go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. So this is a really big topic for so many people in our listening area. Kirk and Paul, what are we going to cover today? 
So the goal here is, you know, we, we know that Ford has a buyout. It's called the VIP buyout. So we're going to talk about what they're offering. We're going to talk about the lump sum question, right? So many companies now, HP offered it, GM, Ford, uh, I think Blue Cross is offering it. Comerica offers it. So many major employers now, and I think this is going to be a trend where they're offering a lump sum buyout. And how do you make that decision? And why is this year more important than most other years in terms of maybe taking the buyout and taking the lump sum because of the way it's calculated? We're going to talk about some of the health care questions that need to be answered. Uh, we're going to talk about how Social Security might impact these decisions. What else you went? Well, talk I, about? No, I, I think in addition, I think hopefully we'll have time. I, you know, there's probably a lot of people who may not be working for Ford, may not be working for some of the companies that you just said, but still have this belief that they're going to be able to dictate when they retire. It. I think we should spend a little time talking about what do you need to do now in anticipation. What if that? What if that's you? What if oh. all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you wake up and your boss says you can't work anymore, and you're in your 60s, and you've not planned for retirement? What should you do now? I love that, Paul. I mean, I. I I think, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that because I think so many baby boomers are going to get caught in a basketball term or sports flat footed. Right. They're going to be caught not prepared. And there's no reason to wait. I mean, if you're within 10 years of retirement, what why are we waiting to begin to prepare? Right. If you have a plan, then you can e- easily pivot, make decisions quickly, like Ford is being forced to make a decision quickly. How do you know whether you need to go back to work or not? There's so many questions for this this segment of our population, the baby boomers, that you don't delay planning. Because right. it's for today, it's another company tomorrow, and another company tomorrow. It will be. It will be. It will be. So, again, Paul and I, we're, we're going to offer this white paper. It's called the 10-Step Guide to an Unexpected Retirement that you can go to our website to get. But you know, Paul and I, if you're regular listeners, listeners to us, we have been teaching. We started this nonprofit organization 10 years ago right? With the intent to help people prepare to and through retirement, just for this reason, this trap right here. It's a seven hour course, 200 page textbook. We teach it at all the major universities around Michigan now. Also in our learning center, we're teaching small groups live right now, and we're also streaming it directly into your homes. So if you're afraid because of COVID, you can stay home. It's a $29 tuition that goes to charity. You can register or get your white paper at retirementplanningedu.com retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981 there's much more with kirk and paul straight ahead always a pleasure to be alongside financial instructors kirk cassidy and dr paul mettler if you'd like to get in touch especially If you'd like to get registered for one of their upcoming courses, there are two easy ways to do that. You can either go to the website, retirementplanningedu.com, or call today, 800-240-8981. You know, Kirk Paul, 2020, it's given us a, a really mixed bag, right? We've seen a lot of changes to the workforce, a lot of people wondering, is their job gonna be around? And that has people pretty nervous. I know in the auto industry specifically, Ford employees are looking at some of this. Tell us what you're hearing. Well, right now there is a offer out there. It's called the VIP Ford buyout package that was recently announced. And really there, Ford's giving, it's about 1,400 of their employees an opportunity to be bought out, right? And they have until October 23rd to make this decision. But there's some variables here that are really important. First, what you the buyout offer is, is based upon the years of service. So if you've been there zero to seven years, the benefit is going to be three months. They're going to pay you an additional three months of pay. If you were there 18 to 15 years, they're going to give you an additional six months of pay. And then 16 plus years. So if you've worked there for 16 years or longer, they're going to give you nine months severance package. Now, how and when you get paid that severance package is the next question you need to tackle, right? First, should I take it? And maybe throughout the class, we'll talk about some of the ways you can determine whether you should be taken and afford to take it. Second, if you don't take it, they're going to lay off. They're, they're, so you, if you're close and you're a highly compensated person, and they're offering this to you, you really need to figure out whether or not you want to take this because they're going to come slashing and you might not get a benefit package. 
although they usually step up and give it even if they're a forced layoff and you don't voluntarily take the buyout. They're often, in the past, they've given it. Here's the thing, though. So if you take the buyout and you, you accept it by October 23rd, the last date of employment will be the end of December. December 31st will be your last day of service. The lump sum will be paid out on in, in 2021. From a tax perspective, that's a lump sum of money that's going to be taxable. And there are some tax strategies, particularly if you're doing advanced planning, is going to impact whether or not you want that lump sum this year or next year, right? Because you can ask for an exception if you go to a manager and the manager might allow you to have your last date of service be November of 2020 and that therefore you'll get your lump sum paid in 2020 yeah, can, can we just clarify yeah. when you we use the term lump sum oftentimes to describe ah, two distinct so if we could you. just for a moment we're, there's lump sum pensions that we sometimes talk about yes but we're talking about here lump sum related to the severance thank you paul you know it's, no, it's okay just so you're talking about lump sum pe- for the severance correct? yes for the severance when i say severance i should i, I you're right we got to be careful so making these decisions is is that is one of so many variables you need to be considering but it's got to be in the back of your mind whether you want an exception. Do you want it to, to, to get it at December 31st so your lump sum, your severance comes in 2021? There's so many questions that need to be answered, and that's the purpose of the show. So, here you know, yeah, so you, you know, one of the concerns, one of the concerns I have is, is that, you know, and you, you said this, is that I think people are thinking this is a great gift, right? This is a great gift. I'm going to get money, but you know what? Maybe I don't need to take it. You know, I was planning on working five, ten more years. But this is a tip of the iceberg, right? Ford isn't doing this because Ford is, you know, in the business of being generous. Sorry. Sure. Ford is doing this because we have massive issues going on here. And this is their way of trying to significantly cut some of their expenses. Whether, whether you take it voluntarily or not, at the end of the day, businesses are struggling. And at the end of the day, whether you want to do it or not, it's very likely that you may not choose it, but you're going to end up getting laid off down the road. So it still begs the question, what are you doing to plan for retirement? What are you going to do to make sure that if you're one of these people, you're, you're okay? And there's just so many people out there, Kirk, who don't think about this. Yeah, I mean, there's no, so many people who really, who are just waiting and waiting, and they just think they can keep kicking this ball down the, down the road. And, and this is, I, I really worry about this. Well, we had, you know, a pretty darn good economy going before We COVID. sure did. We sure did. Uh, unemployment all-time lows. People were making money in the market. Like, So why was, should I worry? Why, right? And, and people got flat, caught flat-footed. We have short memories as Americans. Right. We don't remember the financial right, crisis. Right. We don't realize that something always happens. And the stock market's doing great. So really, there's, not, there's no issues out there, really, right? I mean, everything's great. Everything's hunky-dory, no, right? Yeah. If everything was great, Ford would not be doing this, you guys, exactly. right? Exactly. Paul, why don't I summarize? Because I got a little confused. We had a little problem with the the, the timer here, so I might, I was a little distracted. I wanna I wanna restate the severance lump sum, the severance that Ford is offering with their VIP buyout. If you take it, you have to take it by October twenty third, and your last date of service will be December thirty first. So therefore, you will get this severance money, which is going to be given to you in one lump sum as ordinary income. So it's just like you've gotten paid and if you take it and take and try to get, ask for an exception and and get your last date being November of 2020 well then you're going to have that additional taxable income of 3 6 9 months depending on how many years you've worked there so you got to be really careful about and I know some people are rushing because then when we start talking about the pension lump sum People are trying to rush because rates are about to change. And I know some people are, I know we have clients that are asking for accept, exemptions and we're saying, well, whoa, 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 wait a second. Do we really want nine months of additional income in your tax year of 2020? Or does it make more sense to wait and take it the way they're proposing it and getting it in 2021, that nine months of severance? And and I think the answer is, for most people, you're probably going to want to wait, do it just the way they have it structured, and just know that next year you'll have nine months of your income in your tax return that you have to account for. So obviously there are lots of questions, and we, we're, just, we're just scratching the surface here. We're going to start talking about next segment, the lump sum pension, because that is a big driving force to many decisions here. I can't urge you enough. We are offering a white paper right now. 
It's a, a white paper. It's called The 10-Step Guide to an Unexpected Retirement. I know we don't offer white papers very often because we really want you to go to the seven-hour course. But in this, it, it, because of everything that's going on, three million baby boomers out of the working force, we felt like we had to put something together. So we have this 10-step guide to an unexpected retirement that you can get right at our website, ret- uh, retirementplanningedu.com, or I think you guys would be much better served if you attended one of our seven-hour courses at all the major universities that we are currently right now doing small groups and streaming live so you can stay in your home. It's a $29 tuition that goes to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. Back right after this. Here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. You can find them on Facebook. Simply search Retirement Education Foundation so you can be in the know with everything Kirk and Paul are doing right now to help you navigate your retirement future. And there's a lot to navigate, Kirk and Paul, as we talk about what's happening with employment right now. A lot of employment situations changing, whether that means a furlough, a buyout, a layoff, you know. Talking about buyouts and pensions, I wonder, you know, you get one chance to get these decisions right, and a lump sum always comes up as an option. Is that typically the go-to option? Is that the right choice for most people? Well, I, I think you have to be careful. Actually, can I just to, we're yeah. talking now lump sum pension. Right yes, okay. lump sum pension. Thank yep, you. yep, exactly. And I think you have to be really careful. I know that there are many people in our industry coming out making these broad comments about what you should do. I think the better approach is because it, it, there is no one size fits all here. I mean, that's one of the things we spend a lot of time talking about in the classes. Stop falling for the Susie Ormans and the Ramseys and everyone who comes out with these. Everyone should do this. This is the playbook that everyone should follow. There is no playbook to follow. Let's just be clear. Every one of you will have different circumstances requiring different decisions. We can speak from our experience with many, many GM uh, GM, Ford, Chrysler, uh, although Chrysler doesn't have the lump sum, but GM and Ford, specifically when it comes to their lump sums, Comerica Bank, Blue Cross Blue Shield, we, we take care of a lot of executives there. We take a lot of care of all, a lot of their engineers. Often, most of the time, Paul, with GM and Ford, we're taking lump sums. We're, we're recommending taking lump sums, and we'll explain why, and we explain why in the class quite a bit specifically. Often it's more around tax planning than it is anything else, and that's usually not how anyone's really, anyone else in our industry is really helping you make that decision. But from a tax perspective, it has significant implications. Now, I will say, Paul, Comerica Bank, it's 50-50 whether we're taking lump sum or we're taking the pension. So different companies drive different decisions for us and different individuals and their circumstances will drive different decisions. But I will say this year, more than any other year, the lump sum is going to look better than it ever has. And last year, Ford had the most amount of people taking lump sums in history. That was last year. They're going to break that record this year because the numbers are the 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 pension benefits the lump sums have never been higher than they are going to be this year and i don't think they'll ever be higher than they are this year perhaps encouraging more people to take the buyout retire even if there's no buyout retire to get your hands on that lump sum this year well for sure and 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 part of that has to do with interest rates right right as interest rates go down lump sums go up and and it's hard to imagine a time where interest rates are going to go down much further, right? So it, in some ways, it really is a, a, a perfect situation for that lump sum. I wanted to clarify, you, you, you know, you, you're talking about taking lump sums, and I know we're going to get into how, the mechanics of it, but one thing to be really clear, we're not suggesting anybody take a lump sum from their pension and, and take it as cash. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Good point. Unlike the severance, right? The severance... You're going to get that money. It's going to be ordinary. You're going to pay ordinary income tax. No choice. No choice. When we're talking about lump sum pensions, you would never take that lump sum pension, right, as and bring it into your, you know, income stream and 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 pay taxes on it. We're going to talk about how you're going to do it, but we always want to roll that if we're taking a lump sum 
into an IRA. We don't want to pay taxes on that lump sum. Right. I think I think we first need to, people need to know that if you choose to take the lump sum, as Paul is suggesting, it's a non-taxable event if you roll it to your IRAs. And I think that's really good advice because we could have driven some people to make some bad decisions. The other never do's. <laughs> Another never do is to take your lump sum and go stick it all in the stock market or go buy high yield junk municipal bonds like we recently ran into somebody that did. There, let me tell you something. There are, there are advisors. I know they are. There are advisors out there. I, I've actually just recently met somebody who had another lump sum. There are advisors who are encouraged because the market's so great. Well, yeah. No, that's exactly right. In the, in the, in the, in the people, the, the employees, the clients, the individuals listening yeah. here. Yes. Are teased. They, well, sure. Why wouldn't I stick in the market? Look what the market's done the last ten years. Of course, that is insane to take money. It's kind of like Warren Buffett said: you have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. The pension's a great example. You won, right? You never you're, don't take something that's guaranteed and stick it in the market for what greed? Right. That's right. insane. You need to make sure that if you're taking that lump sum, that somehow you are meeting your needed income on an insured, guaranteed basis. We're not going to specifics how here, and we do talk about in the class, but if you take that lump sum, please, I know you're tempted, everyone's tempted to go stick the money in the market to make it get rich quick. Mm-hmm. Stop. Please stop. Don't do that. You've worked your whole life for that money. It's guaranteed. Don't blow it. Right, right, right. And the reality is, even if the market's doing great and, and, and for a few years that lump sum grows, the reality is when you start taking that money out, if that money starts going down, you will kick yourself in the butt. Well, it's because they don't even understand. Google this. I want everyone listening. I, I think I've been doing this for a couple of weeks now in a row. Google sequence of return risk. Sequence of return risk. That is the biggest risk to your retirement plan. So I don't... I, it doesn't matter your average rate of return over the next 10 or 20 years. That's irrelevant. And if you go take that lump sum pension, you go stick it in the market, and you just have a few bad years early, that sequence of return risk will destroy your plan. Please hear us. Don't take that risk. I'm literally gripping the mic right now, Paul, because I am so fearful. I mean, you look, Robinhood, retail investors went from 6% of retail people of all trading in 2019, only 6% was retail investors. Right now, it's 25%. Right. Everyone is bored, getting gutsy. The market is on fire. Everyone thinks they can hit the home run and, and knock it out of the park. Please. This is your retirement. Please. So let, let's talk about a class. Yeah, please. Like, so, so, no, no. So, you know, as Kirk has shared, we have this white paper. Normally, we don't offer white papers because we want you to come to our class, but we are offering this white paper, 10 step guide to an unexpected retirement. You can go to retirementplanningedu.com. That's retirementplanningedu.com. And you can read it. It's a great white, white paper, Kirk. I mean, I think it's a lot of great information. Most importantly, we really would encourage you to come to our class. $29 to attend. We've been, you know, we've been streaming it live for a while, but we also have some small classes, at all the major universities. You can call one 800 and you can register when you call or when you go to get that white paper retirementplanningedu.com you can also register for one of our classes and we offer them Kirk, a couple times a month always please come register and you'll learn more about how to do all the things that we talk about on our show there is much more retirement education hour straight ahead here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler for another edition of the Retirement Education Hour. And we're glad you've joined us today. Big show today as we're diving into a topic that is sure to affect a lot of our listeners today. Maybe you, as we know, there's been a lot of changes to employment with furloughs and buyouts. There've been even some mentions of layoffs. And with that news, we've got to ask some questions, right? Are you ready for the unexpected? Kirk and Paul have made this very, very easy for you. In fact, you're welcome to go to the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. You can download Kirk and Paul's complimentary guide to an unexpected layoff. Ten steps that you need to know about. You can click on that link and make sure you download that today. And that is your complimentary copy. Again, it's retirementplanningedu.com for that 10-step guide to an unexpected retirement. 
Kirk and Paul, we all want to make sure we have our retirements prepared and planned for, but you know, life can throw us a curveball, and sometimes we have to make some pretty big decisions pretty quickly. And that includes decisions about our pension. When you have a lump sum, Kirk and Paul, does timing matter? And could this year be a good year for taking that lump sum? Yes, Megan. It is. Look, I'm so excited I interrupted you. I, yes, this is a really, really big year for lump sums preceding a really, really big year for lump sums, right? So, and I'll give you the numbers so you understand if you understand how they calculate it, then you'll recognize why 2019 for Ford was the biggest distribution of that lump sum that they've ever had. And they're expecting 2020 to be break that record to be the largest, right? And it's all based upon interest rates. But the calculation I know is confusing, and I'm going to read it. I, I'm going to read it just so everyone knows, because there's many factors that influence this. The first is your age, um, when you started with the employer, your start date, what employee class, what level are you, years of service, and then the big one that, all those are big, but we, we know those. that The variable, the one that changes, that moves the number so much. I, I mean, just put it in perspective, Paul, I have a client that saw their lump sum go up almost 20%, 18% this year, a GM. Uh, or is he a Ford? I can't remember, but it was 18%. 18% on, you do the math. On a lot of money. On, you know, a million dollars. Right, it's a lot of money. That, that's $180,000 more right. this year versus last year. That's more than he makes a year. That's right. That's about right. what he makes. You. So what do you, you're working for free the next year, right? Because here's how it, the 10-year corporate bonds is what's going to drive your lump sum from being higher or lower. And it works in reverse. As interest rates go up, your lump sum will go down. And as interest rates have fallen, and they have fallen dramatically, they will go, your lump sum will go up. So let me give you some numbers. In 2018, we saw, so it, it, they always are observing uh, the August 10-year uh, corporate bond rates. That's what they're observing in August announced in October. And when we look back in August of 2018, that 10-year corporate bond, it's not the treasury anymore. That changed in 2006. It's now the corporate bonds. It was uh, The 10-year corporate bond was at just about 4%. In August of 19, we saw the at 2.85%. So that was down 1.15%-ish. One, one, uh, 1. And then right now, uh, well, it's actually a July number because they haven't reported August yet. July's number is at 1.99, another 1%. And the general rule of thumb is for every 1% interest move, rates move, it'll impact your lump sum by 10%-ish. Again, with a lot of variables to consider, we're using general numbers, full disclosure, but it's a big move, Paul. In two years, that's almost 20% people have seen their lump sum increase and if you think interest rates are going to go up and we are at a 10-year corporate at 1.99 that's the lowest we've ever seen in history if you think rates are going to go up in the next year if it goes up one percent your lump sum goes down ten percent yeah you know i'm imagining listening to this thinking so why don't i just wait why don't i just wait one more year because if you're talking about such a huge dramatic change maybe if i wait another year I can get another 10%, but he, right? Right? Yeah, I, no, I get it. I, 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 Greed. We, I hate to say this. <laughs> we meet people. I mean, a lot of people think I this know. way, right? I a know. lot of people think this way. And and, and it's, some of it's greed. Some of it's misinformation. Some of it is psychological. psychological fear. fear. It's an excuse. Fear. But you got to ask yourself, 1.99%, right? Yes. I mean, it, we're talking about almost almost nothing here right? right i mean how yep. much lower is it going to go and and do you really want to risk the chance that it may go down more versus what if it goes up right what yeah. if it goes up you know greed is one of those things you got to be really careful and it sneaks up on us it sneaks up on all of us yeah right? I, I don't think many experts you're going to find many who would say a year from now interest <laughs> rates are going to be go, lower no it's i hard think to imagine. the consensus i think you'd, you'd have it's definitely the majority of people saying interest rates are going to go up. I think we people, hope they, in fact, we, yeah. we hope they, they go up. The Warren Senior Savers. Right. We right? hope they go up. I would say, Paul, one of the big 
variables is is anxiety and fear. People don't even understand that that's what's happening. They find all these excuses, excuses, secondary reasons why they're not ready to retire. Right. Uh, healthcare, like right. something happens magically at sixty five and Medicare is free. It's not right. Or I mean, just all these ran- lump sums going to be more. All these random excuses. I don't have enough, but they really do have enough, right? All these excuses for why not to retire for so many of these people. Now, I'm not saying every. The, there are people out there trying to retire too early, but the trend is most people are underestimating what they have and what it can produce for them. And then you can you compound that with the lump sum being at the all time high, not a little, but a lot, the all time high. And likely your lump sum is going to go down. I think maybe it's time to reach out for that 10 step guide to an unexpected retirement white paper. I would think, right? Yeah. Or this, maybe, or, or maybe come to a class. Oh yeah. Come to a seven hour course. Right? right. And so Paul and I started, so retirement education foundation was started over 10 years ago, specifically for this, for this reason right, right. now, this is the purpose. This is the purpose is to teach you how to build and construct your own retirement plan to avoid the traps. Our industry is not informing you guys of the information on an individualized, customized basis. That's what this seven-hour course does. It's a 200-page textbook. It's $29 to attend and tuition goes to charity. We teach it at U of M, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State University, Oakland University. We teach it right here in our learning center. We are teaching small groups where we're social distancing and wearing masks. We're also streaming them live to you. There is no excuse not to attend a course. None. If you'd like to attend, go to retirementplanningetu.com, retirementplanningetu.com, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back right here on the Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. It is a pleasure to be back with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, and we're glad you're here for the Retirement Education Hour. If you would like to attend one of Kirk and Paul's upcoming courses, and these are intensive multi-hour courses where you're going to get a full download because a 21st century retirement, that's what it requires. You really need to get everything squared away from soup to nuts. You can register today at retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. And I gave that website. Make sure you visit that if you are facing an unexpected retirement. Have you been furloughed? Have you been offered a buyout? Have you been laid off? There's a lot of changes being made to different employment situations right now, especially in our community. You can get your complimentary copy of Kirk and Paul's guide, 10 Steps to an Unexpected Layoff. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. Kirk and Paul, we were talking about pensions, making those pension decisions that are so important. And that includes deciding, do I take the lump sum? Do I take the annuity from the company? What are the different factors you should be looking at if you're trying to make that big choice? Megan, this is something really challenging to do by radio. Honestly, in a six, eight minute segment. It's super challenging because I know as a public, as the general public wants things very quickly explained and simple. One size sort of fits all. You either fit into this camp or this camp, and this is how you decide. But this isn't that simple. Nothing related to retirement is that simple, despite our industry continuing to try to promote this simplicity and we talk about it every time it's because our industry wants scalability. They want transactional. They want to meet as many people as they can, sell as much as they can. So they come up with one size fits all, simple rules of what you should do and that is not particularly with this topic. I shouldn't say particularly all these retirement topics, whether it's social security, Medicare, um taking a lump sum versus the annuity payout. When do you retire? Do you Roth convert? How and when do you take income out of which accounts at what age? All of these are factors. And so when, when, we're, when we're looking at a lump sum versus a pension annuity, which is what the two things we're looking at, Paul, it's not just looking at the income gross before tax benefit that they're going to receive from the annuity pension versus, the, versus what you can create on your own from the lump sum. It's not a dollar for dollar math problem. 
It's a math problem of how does my pension impact the taxation on my Social Security? How does my my income from my annuity pension impact my taxation on my required minimum distributions from my 401k? How does it impact the cost of my Medicare because Medicare is means tested? How does it impact my taxation on my capital gains and dividends? It does. So we're always wanting to look at this as a net benefit. What do I end up in my pocket? So it's not a simple compare what I can create in income versus what they'll give me in an annuity income. So, 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 just if I can clarify, there's, there's, it's, this is really important. Really important. You said a lot there. I did. So, I think at the end, they were, what we're saying is, so at the, you know, if you're going to compare how much your company is going to pay you in your annuity pension versus how much income you can generate from that lump sum, it's not dollar for dollar. Even if you may not necessarily produce exactly the same amount when you take that lump sum. There are so many other variables from a tax perspective that will result in more money in your pocket. The calculation is way more complicated than that, right? That's the bottom line, right? Which we right? cover in our class Which, it, 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 a lot. We don't just cover. We actually, in the class, talk about how do you do this calculation? Right. Because, again, as you say, there's taxes on Social Security. There's you know the premium on Medicare, which is means tested. There are a lot of variables that go into whether you should take that annuity from the company or take the lump sum because here's the deal. You could take that lump sum and potentially defer taking the income from that. And there's a lot you can do from a tax perspective that in the long run, you're going to save a lot of money. Right. So, so, so think about this. What Paul's saying is when you take a lump sum, you now are in control of the dollars. It's your money. So if you die predecease, if you die early, the beneficiaries are still getting something. That's the obvious. But it's your money. You get to start the income from that source of money when you want. And what you, when you come to class, you'll learn the sequence of when you take your income, the order, the distribution of your money in the order you take it will drive your performance in retirement. It's not the rate of return on your investments. It's the income plan. It's when and how you take that income. So I'll give you another example, Paul, down that same road. We have someone, let's say someone's listening that has saved money in a Roth account. They have money in what we call a taxable account, meaning after tax they've made, there's no tax liabilities on the principal, right? They have all this money saved, but they also have, call it a million dollars in 401ks. They've got their pension income. So once they turn 72 years old, they have to take taxable pension income. They have to take R&Ds. They have to take Social Security. And when we add those three up, it exceeds their needed income. So they never get to use the Roth money. They never get to use the tax-free money they have in the, the non-IRA accounts. They never get to use the tax favorable money that they were so disciplined and saved because they don't need it. Because they're going to be forced to right. take more than they need. Because their RMDs and the pensions greater than what they need. That's why when you take your Social Security, whether and, and again, we're not saying everyone should take the lump sum. We're definitely not saying that. It depends on your circumstance and the types of assets you have and what the age difference between you and your spouse. Are you married? Are you... These are all variables that are going to drive this decision. I hope people are listening because I know your advisors and brokers aren't talking about this. They won't touch taxes. They won't touch projecting out taxes for 30 years and giving you the best pathway to take your income to minimize those taxes for 30 years. I know they won't. And your CPAs and the CPAs that are listening to us today, a lot of CPAs are our clients. They come to our class all the time. They don't project out 30 years. You don't pay them enough. To, uh, candidly, you don't pay them enough to do that. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. There's no software. It's literally running iterations to find the sweet spots. They will give you tax planning for a year. That's it. That's it. So, again, go to our, our, our website to get the landing page, the 10 steps to an unexpected retirement. Attend one of our seven-hour courses that are held at the University of Michigan, Michigan State University, the Novi Campus, Eastern Michigan University, Oakland University. We also teach it in our learning center right here in Livonia. Small groups. We're doing small groups, social distancing, wearing a mask. We're very careful. And we're streaming it live. So while we're teaching the class, you can be in your home watching it. It's a $29 tuition to attend. You can get the white paper and or sign up for the class at retirementplanningedu.com. 
retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. We have much more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Find them on Facebook. Make sure you give them a follow. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation. We've been talking about the current state of employment, especially right here in the greater Detroit metro. A lot going on. We're hearing about layoffs and buyouts and furloughs. And if that's you, I want you to pay close attention today and make you aware of a resource that Kirk and Paul want to put in your hands. This is complimentary. It's their 10-step guide to an unexpected retirement, and you can find it at the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. That's retirementplanningedu.com. You know, Kirk and Paul, in this environment, there are a lot of decisions that our listeners are going to have to make about their, their upcoming employment, whether they step away from the workforce or not. So many decisions. How do you make these types of decisions and get it right? Megan, I've really enjoyed this show. Paul, I really, I think this is a really, really valuable show. It's exactly what we envisioned 10 years ago when the Retirement Education Foundation was started. I mean, that is a nonprofit organization, the Retirement Education Foundation. These shows, it's all based around helping people to prepare for retirement. And one of the biggest variables is the unexpected retirement, right? And so we've got 3 million baby boomers since COVID have been forced out of the workforce. That's just now, and it's going to continue to increase. And and many of them are wondering, well, do I need to go back to work? How much do I need to earn if I go back to work? How do I make this decision? Then we have a whole group of people at Ford that have a buyout offer. Should I take it? Can I afford to take it? Then we have a, another group of people who are looking at their lump sums at an all-time high, their pension lump sum benefits at an all-time high, saying, well, is this the time or not? Can I afford to or not? right? It's the whole reason we started this 10 years ago and we started teaching our classes, trying to help people prepare for this question. And then, Kirk, there's a whole bunch of people who no one has talked to them about, but they're looking around and seeing this pandemic and they know their their businesses aren't doing great yeah. and they're scared that they're not yeah. going to make it either, but they don't know. They right? don't. They don't know. So, and whether it's this pandemic, Paul, or it's a future healthcare event, or it's a, another recession we stumble ourselves into. Right. We don't get to always pick and choose when we're going out. So even if you have a great job, everything's fine. If you're within 10 years of retirement, you need to start thinking about this and getting plans in place. And education's where it starts. We keep saying that. But Paul, let's give them a, a taste of what are some of the variables they need to know before they pull the trigger on retirement. The first one that comes to mind that is your favorite, Paul, you talk about all the time, is know what you are going to need to spend in retirement. And Paul, what percentage of our, in our personal practice, what percentage of people get this wrong? Get it wrong? Get it wrong. Uh, 70%. Well, guess what? what? It's not surprising 70%. You just threw that out, right? I, yeah. I, I set you up. I want to see yeah. what you said. Yeah. The number is 66% of retirees in the first five years of retirement, will spend more money than they spent the last five years they were working. 66%, which is right where you nailed it. it. 70% of the people that come to our class, or we end up in our own private practice we work with, but let's just talk about the class, come in under anticipating what they're going to need in retirement. Yeah. Because of our industry's brainwashed them in this whole needing 70 to 80% of their income, which is garbage. If you have resources, just remember, these all these general rules are based upon a baby boomer population that has 40% of you primarily getting all of their income from Social Security. That doesn't apply to you if you have resources. If you have money, you aren't going to live on less in the first 5 to 10 years of retirement. You're going to spend more. Well, that's the key. That's people 70, don't believe us. That's 70%. Many of those people, they didn't just underestimate. In fact, many of those people actually by the time we were done, wanted more money than they were actually living on For while sure. they were working because they, they realize they're healthy. They've been working 35 years of their life. They've been serving money. They've been serving money, and they're thinking, you know what? How long am I going to have to be able to take my vacations, redo my kitchen, right? And all of a sudden, it clicks, right? It clicks and realizes. They also have a ton of hours, too. That's right. Exactly. 2,500 extra hours, hours that they their, weren't working. That's right. So what people, clicks, Paul? Tell me what clicks for them. 
it, it, all of a sudden it clicks to them that you know the window of time they're going to have is going to is not, no one ever knows how long that window is going to be. Yes. No one knows how long you're going to be able to do the things you want to do. And the, so it, it, so what happens? What clicks is you realize, oh my god. Immortality, mortality. I'm not going to live forever. I better start doing things now. And all of a sudden, they say, "I want more money now. I want to do the things I've never done before." Paul, they're not wrong. They're not. They're uh, not wrong. So one of the things we're going to encourage you to do is we're going to tell you you need to you need to trial run whatever you think you're going to live on. I don't care you CFOs, CPAs, you really bright engineers with your spreadsheets and you know your budget. Try to live on the number. Try to live on the number. For a whole year. For a not whole for year. one month. No, for a whole year, try to live on that number. And then also, you're going to have an unexpected expense you didn't budget for every 3.2 years. How do we know this? Because we have helped thousands of people through this phase of your life. Remember, remember people, remember listeners, this is the first time you will ever plan for a retirement, your retirement. Please don't be foolish enough to think you're the first time you're ever going to do this and you're not going to make mistakes. You're going to make a lot of mistakes if you try to do this without understanding where the traps and the risks are. Can, can I say one thing, yep. or just one more thing about the budget? Yep. Because I think people often do this. You tell people live on that and people say, well, I know what my gas bills are. I know what my mortgage is. We're talking about everything, yes. everything, your vacations, the, you know, the money you give to your children and grandchildren, the, the roof. gifts, the roof, every single expense yes. you have to include. The roof you need every 20 years, the that's furnace right. you need that's every right. 15 years, that's, right. that's got to be budgeted in. All it has to be budgeted in. So, uh, you know, that that's a taste, but there's so many things. When do I take Social Security? How do I take Social Security? And that's not, again, that's not a calculator. It's not a calculator that makes that decision because Social Security impacts the taxation on all of your other assets. Taxes is a big variable. How I leave my money to the surviving spouse and protect them, that's a big mistake. How do I leave it to my children? These are all the things that we cover in our seven-hour course and why we started it 10 years ago. This nonprofit organization intended to teach you how to plan to and through retirement. It's $29 tuition. We teach them at every major university. We're streaming them live now from those universities and doing small groups if you want to go in person. You can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. All matters discussed during this show are for informational purposes only. Opinions expressed are solely those of senior planning advisors and staff. All topics covered are believed to be from reliable sources. However, senior planning advisors makes no representations as to its accuracy or completeness. This shall in no way be construed as a solicitation to sell securities or investment advisory services to residents of any state other than Michigan or where otherwise permitted. Topics should be discussed with your individual advisor prior to implementation. Fee-based financial planning and investment advisory services offered through Strategic Investment Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Strategic Investment Advisors and Senior Planning Advisors are affiliated companies. This radio show is a paid placement.